with improv, this is where, excuse my language, you can't bullshit it anymore. If you're not playing from language, things will start to fall apart. Who's had the experience where they can improvise with their right hand and the chords start to suffer? If you've had that experience, it shouldn't be like that because you should be playing over the chord progression. But then the focus is melodic. It's, it's not the harmony. The chord progression isn't as fixed as you thought, right? So that's why I'm talking about the work that I've spoken about previously in terms of getting that, those harmonies solid. So with improv, I recommend that you practice in three stages. The first stage is simply making phrases out of context, just using a scale so they're not applied to a tune. The second phase is over progressions, so you're prepared when they do come up in tunes. And the third phase is working within tunes themselves. In this lesson, we're working on phase one, just learning to build some phrases out of context and getting some vocabulary. First thing is be practicing phrases all the time. I always say that we can't, if we really think about it, improvisation, it's different every time, right? It's not making it up as you go along, but it's composing spontaneously, spontaneous composition. And if that's the case, then what can we really practice? So for me, I feel that building short phrases and working on the joins, the connection between chord changes, practicing that in real time without slowing down for the chord changes, which is what most people do. They don't even realize they do it. That will save you, right? So if you're taking, let's say, 2-5 in the key of F, G minor 7 to C7. Now, landed on the third of C7, right? Instead of saying... A slowdown. We don't want stuff like that. That's what I mean by making the connections. So first of all, phrases out of context. Just taking a major scale, it has so much to offer you wouldn't believe. Then learning phrases over chord progressions. Then learning phrases in tunes. What the novice does, and most people fail with, is here's a song that I can't play very well and it keeps falling apart, but I want to, I'm getting bored and I want to improvise. So I'm going to go beginning to end, beginning to end, beginning to end, never zoom in on any particular part of it, never get good at any part of it, never figure out which bits I don't really know. That kind of playing is not going to help us. That probably needs a whole lesson or video on its own. <laughs> so today let's do some out of context phrase building. Let's work in the key of F. I bet you've heard this exercise. I'm not much of a Hannon exercise guy, not because I don't like it, just haven't done a lot of it. You've heard this before though, right? You've heard all that stuff before. So let's say you just had a little exercise like that. Anybody could make that up. One, two, three, four, and then down four from six, right? And then the same from two. Up four notes, skip a note, and come down four notes, right? So we're going to turn this into a jazz thing just to prove a point. How about the first thing you should do is be able to swing anything that you're working on. So for example, one and two and three and four and... That's the first thing to work on. Okay, so let's say I've got that all the way through the scale, right? How about if we put a half step under the first note? So for example, one, two, three, four. Now I can't put a half step under the next note because I've still got a note to play. So I'm going to cut off the last note like this. Can you hear already we're starting to sound like we're practicing jazz? If you're enjoying this lesson, would you please do me a favor and give it a like, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you know when I upload new content. And if it's time to level up your playing, then come and see us on Jazz Skills. More about that at the end. For now, let's get back to the lesson. Can you see where the vocabulary starts to come in? This is the difference between just copying a lick. And I believe you'll have seen me on YouTube talking about things like Bud Powell phrases, Charlie Parker phrases, Barry Harris, whatever. I believe in doing some of that, but I don't believe in doing it without having any linguistic skills. That doesn't make sense, yeah? So you could practice your whole scale like that. Find your own variations. Let's say, I don't know, we put a half step below. I'm going to cut off the final note instead this time. 
Maybe just that much will be fine, actually. Maybe a half step underneath the bottom note of each one. One, two, three, four. Now, honestly, I've never done that before with that particular exercise. So it's something for me as well. My point is, there's always something to do. For me, jazz education, there's, a, there's an old phrase, something to the effect of, education is not filling a bucket, it's lighting a fire. That's what jazz should be like, learning jazz. It shouldn't be, you show me which licks to play and I'll try and remember some Oscar Peterson licks. Well, I can't remember any Oscar Peterson licks. <laughs> right? I've got a couple of... Uh, Charlie Parker things down, but Charlie Parker played like Charlie Parker, right? It's it's learning to play like yourself. And and when you do little things like this, you can speak the language at your level and build from there. That's the important thing, okay? Then you want to do things that don't always begin on the first beat. So for example, what if I take that same thing when I stopped there? and learn to do it on the second beat. That will mess most of my students up. It's fine watching someone else do it. It's harder than you think. So one, two, three, four, one. Three, four, one. Two, three, four, and one. Two, three, four, and one. Two, and three, and four, and Sometimes people will play it right, but they're not really hearing it on the two. Doing stuff like that is so crucial because you don't want all your improvisation phrases beginning on the first beat of the bar. We want to be able to play these things from different beats, like the second beat of the bar. So we're not beginning all our phrases on one. Okay, this is how it be. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, and four, and one. Two, three, four, and one. Two, three, four, and that kind of thing. Maybe you put a half step underneath the first note, then we'll begin on the and of one. So now it makes more sense, Rosita, good. And the other thing I wanted to say about that is sometimes people will play it, but they're not really thinking two. They're really just hearing it on the one. So it's, it's not good practice if that's going on, right? It's harder than it seems. Listening to somebody else, probably quite easy. It's harder than it seems. Now I'm going to put a half step a half beat before. So one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one, two, three, four, one and two and three and four and one. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. But can you see how it's about us becoming skilled? It's not just about getting cooler licks from other people. This was just a piece of Hannon, right? It was just a simple piano exercise that most classical students will be put through at some point. Taking the scale and turning it into jazz is something that anyone can do. Sometimes you need help. That's fine. I'll help you. We do tons of stuff, you know, which on jazz skills, for example, where we have stuff to do. It's not that you're left on your own, but the act of just sitting with a scale and finding different ways to work it will give you so much experience you wouldn't believe. That's what I wanted to say about that. Hope you found some opportunities to use this in your playing. If you'd like to learn more, then consider joining us on Jazz Skills. We have things for everybody at every level, including a developing fluency course to get you fluent in the language to begin with, improvisation, chord movements, voicing, accompanying, you name it. Support from me, plus a vibrant community as well. Hope to see you there. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.